स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडेज लेक्चर इन लास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ हार्मोनिक ऑसिलेटर एंड हाउ टू सॉल्व इट क्वांटम मैकेनिकली सो फार वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द आइगन वैल्यूज ऑफ द हार्मोनिक ऑसिलेटर प्रॉब्लम एंड ऑल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस द फंक्शनल फॉर्म ऑफ द लोएस्ट आइगन फंक्शन ऑफ हार्मोनिक ऑसिलेटर टूडे विल कंटिन्यू आवर डिस्कशन फ्रॉम देयर Uh, if you remember, we defined our phi zero, which is the lowest eigen function of harmonic oscillator, as we obtained the normalization constant given here, beta square, which is defined as m omega divided by h bar. This is the normalization constant, and this is the functional form of the lowest eigen function of harmonic oscillator. And we also discussed that this functional, fo this form is is known as a Gaussian function. It gives a bell shape. Uh, function. If you notice one thing, the exponent of this function, the exponential function, has beta square x square. If you find out that the dimension of beta, you will find that it has the dimension of length, length inverse. So, if beta is length inverse, I multiply x with it, then this quantity becomes a dimensionless quantity. So, here beta square x square is actually a dimensionless quantity. We would define this dimensionless quantity beta x as rho, which is a new dimensionless coordinate as opposed to this x. Which, which, which is a coordinate with a particular dimension and how, am, how, how are we going from the dimension coordinate to dimension less coordinate by using by multiplying x with this beta which whose, whose just to remind you beta square is m omega divided by h bar. So, by multiplying this factor with the dimension uh, uh, of the problem x we get this dimension less coordinate. We will discuss we will read define this wave function the lowest wave function uh, of harmonic oscillator in in the dimensionless coordinate. So, we have in the dimensionless coordinate we have phi 0 as the normalization constant a multiplied by e to the power minus rho square by 2, where rho is defined as beta x. Now, since rho is beta x, the limit of rho is also going to be same as the limit of x that is from minus infinite to plus infinite and if we have to normalize this function you would see that phi 0 star phi 0. Now, instead of normalizing it in coordinate of x I am normalizing it through by I am integrating it in the coordinate of rho. This one should be 1. So, therefore, a square minus infinite to plus infinite e to the power minus rho square d rho. This is the integral that we have to evaluate, but you know that this is a Gaussian function which is an even function. So, instead of evaluating this integral from minus infinite to plus infinite, what I am going to do is that I am going to evaluate it from 0 to plus infinite and multiply this by 2, because the integration between 0 to plus infinite is equal to integration between mi minus infinite to 0. So, therefore, this minus infinite to plus infinite integration gives me twice the value of the integration from 0 to infinite e to the power minus rho square d rho and this value I know as square root of half into square root of pi. So, this has to be 1. So, therefore, my a is going to be 1 by phi to the power 1 fourth. So, to write down the normalized function form of the Eigen function, the lowest Eigen function, I have in, in dimensionless coordinate, I have as you will see that this functional form is somewhat simpler than the previous one where it depended on the dimension. Not only the simplicity of the functional form, it also provides us a bit cl more clarity on harmonic oscillator problem when we change from one system to another system, because 
Now, this dimension is not system dependent because it is uh, dimension uh, this row is not system dependent because it is already dimensionless coordinate. The advantage of using this we would discuss in, in, in some uh, in some detail in a few, uh, future class. So, this is now the form of the wave function uh, the eigen func lowest eigen function of harmonic oscillator in dimensionless coordinate. We will continue our discussion, but before that what we will do is that we will express our step up operator which is a plus operator. If you remember we defined it as beta by root 2 x minus i p m omega. So, here x and p are defined uh, in, in terms of the dimension coordinate x. Now, we would like to express this a plus the step operator in terms of dimensionless coordinate. So, if you remember, so we can expand this. So, this is beta x divided by root 2 minus beta divided by root 2 i divided by m omega p. So, if you see beta x you already identified this is rho by square root 2 because we have defined the dimensionless coordinate rho as beta into x minus I have to do little work on the second term i by m omega and then I define my p operator. So, this is operator p which is minus i h bar d by d x. When you look at this term, so I have rho minus root 2. So, I see here i minus i would give me plus 1 and I am left with beta divided by root 2 h bar by m omega d by d x, but since x is rho divided by beta. So, I am writing out d rho and then I will have to multiply this uh, with with beta. So, I am sorry this is not this is beta. So, d by d x becomes beta into d by d rho. So, I have beta here beta here beta square and if you remember h bar divided by m omega is 1 over beta square. So, therefore, this term becomes rather simple. all this term they cancel out they become 1 and then I am left with this simple form. So, I can further simplify it, simplify it by. So, in dimensionless coordinate my step up operator also becomes somewhat simple. I can similarly show step down operator as this is the step down operator and this is the step up operator in dimensionless coordinate. We would now continue our discussion as to uh, the point that so far what we have done is that we have obtained the functional form of the lowest eigen function that is phi 0, but we do not know what are the functional forms of other eigen functions of the harmonic oscillator problem and that is what we are going to discuss next. So, we have phi 0 as a normalization constant multiplied by the Gaussian function e to the power minus rho square by 2. This is in dimensionless coordinate. We know that we, but we still do not know what is phi 1. To obtain phi 1 what we will do is that we will apply this step up operator a plus on, on phi 0 and this we know is proportional to phi 1 when a plus the step up operator acts on phi 0 function it gives me phi 1. So, I know what is the functional form of a plus operator. So, let us do this. So, I am continuing this discussion. So, this is proportional to uh, 1 over root 2 rho minus d by d rho. This is a plus operator in dimensionless coordinate phi 0 instead of writing phi 0, I will use its the functional form. So, I have a which is which is a which is a normalization constant I am keeping that constant here 
and writing down e to the power minus rho square two by two. The reason why I am bringing this uh, a uh, to the left side, you see that it is important for you to realize that this is an operator which is a rho which, uh, which whose action is simply multiplication, but this is a differential operator. So, I have to differentiate this function uh, with respect to rho the function that comes after after this operator. So, now what you see is that I have some normalization constant I again have to renormalize this new new function. So, therefore, in other words I can write down this instead of using this proportionality I am writing down this normalization constant and I am putting all these constants into into a new constant I am calling it a 1 and simply I have the form So, this to get phi 1 what would I have to do is that I have to act I have to make uh, calculate what is the action of this operator a plus operator the step up operator on, on this function fine. Now, to get phi 2 what would I do phi 2 I know is I can obtain phi 2 when I apply step up step up operator on phi 1. So, this is a phi 2 is proportional to a plus operator on phi 1. I know this this is phi 1 how what is phi 1? Phi 1 is action of a plus into phi 0. So, therefore, this is equivalent to a plus a plus phi 0 because phi 1 is proportional to a plus phi 0. So, therefore, to obtain phi 2 I have to apply this a plus operator twice. What can I write? I can write this phi 2 as some normalization constant a 2 I have to individually normalize this Eigen function phi this a 2 multiplied by 2 times this operator a plus operator rho minus d by d rho. And this operator is going to act on this function this Gaussian function e to the power minus rho square by 2. Similarly, if I have to get phi 3 I will have a normalization constant a 3 multiplied by the action of this step up operator thrice on this function phi 0. So, this is my phi 0 the lowest Eigen function whose form I derived. Now, phi 1 the first the second Eigen function of the, the harmonic oscillator problem I will obtain by applying this operator on the lowest Eigen function e to the power minus rho square by 2. The second Eigen function I would get by applying this operator twice rho minus d by d rho and one more time the same operator and I will have to apply this operator twice on this function e to the power minus rho square by 2 which is the lowest Eigen function. So, if I know the lowest Eigen function phi 0 I can simply keep on applying the step up operator as many times to to get my higher Eigen functions. So, this is phi 2. So, to get phi n to get phi n I will have to apply this operator n number of times. You might wonder that this calculation be, would become very very complex to do when n is anything greater than 1 or 2 or when it becomes 3 you can try it out for yourself any when in n is equals to 3 then this action this this one uh, action of this operator on this becomes very difficult. Although it is possible to do, but it is difficult you may wonder as to why then we are expressing our Eigen function in this form. The reason is simple because we know something important about this function. Uh, the application of this operator on this function actually gives us a well known polynomial which is uh, what we are going to discuss next is, is known as the po uh, Hermite polynomial. So, the general form of this the Eigen functions of harmonic oscillator is given here which is phi n it has got a normalization constant a n multiplied by this h n which is Hermitian operator. This h n Hermitian operator is 
is H A n in this Hermitian operator uh, excuse me this n this is called Hermite polynomial Hermite polynomial. So, in this case n is the nth order Hermite polynomial in the coordinate of rho. This H n is coming when you are applying this step up operator n times rho minus d by d rho to the power n. When you apply that function on e to the power minus rho square by 2, you would actually get Hermite polynomials. The Hermite polynomials of first uh, few lowest orders are shown here. When the 0 third order Hermite polynomial is very simple, this is simply 1. The first order Hermite polynomial is simply 2 rho, second order is 4 rho square minus 2 and so on and so forth. These Hermite polynomials are often found tabulated in many textbooks. So, what happens the advantage of writing down the harmonic oscillator eigenfunction in this format is that it is very easy to write down any order uh, eigen uh, any uh, eigenfunction of the harmonic oscillator corresponding to any value of n. We simply need the corresponding Hermite uh, polynomial. We will do that we will write down now uh, the first few uh, the lowest few uh, eigenfunctions of harmonic oscillator. Let us see what is phi 0. We have already derived it uh, accurately, but then we would use this functional form to uh, write down this expression. So, when n is 0, so I have a 0 which is the normalization constant and the fourth 0 third order Hermite polynomial is simply 1, 1 e to the power minus rho square by 2. So, I you can see this is simply a 0 e to the power minus rho square by 2. This is the form we have already seen. So, this is phi 0. Now, when I want to write down phi 1 that means, the second eigenfunction of harmonic oscillator I will take in this equation n equals 1. So, when I do that I have a 1 which is the normalization constant. Now, the Hermite polynomial of first order which is 2 rho and then e to the power minus rho square by 2. So, you see that I, ha I still have to get this uh, the normalization constant a 1. In fact, by using the properties of Hermite, Hermite polynomials that there exists a general form of this normalization constant a n which is given here. You can use the different value of values of n to get obtain the normalization constant, but then you should also be able to normalize any other function. For example, take this rho e to the power minus rho square by 2 which is the which is phi 1 and try to normalize it independently and you see whether you are obtaining this this expression or not. So, a 1 2 rho is e to the power so, this is phi 1, this is phi 0 and similarly when I try to write down the uh, eigenfunction of corresponding to n equals 2, when n is 2 we can write down the fun eigenfunction phi 2 as a 2 multiplied by the Hermite polynomial 4 rho square minus 2 multiplied by e to the power minus rho square by 2. And similarly, phi this this is my phi 2, the phi 3 would be a 3, the third order polynomial a Hermite polynomial 8 rho cube minus 12 rho into e to the power minus rho square by 2. So, it as you can see it, it becomes very easy to write down the eigenfunctions of harmonic oscillator in, in this manner. So, to, remi to re remind you the eigenfunction of harmonic oscillator has three important components, one the normalization cons component a n, the Hermite polynomial and the Gaussian function e to the power minus rho square by 2. So, remembering this fact, this fact you can actually write down the eigenfunction any eigenfunction of harmonic oscillator very easily. One more thing you should uh, you, you can uh, see here is that the lowest eigenfunction of harmonic oscillator has only the Gaussian function which we already have discussed is an even function. When you look at the second eigenfunction phi 1, you see that this is this has e to the power minus rho square by 2 the Gaussian function which is an even function, but it is multiplied by rho which is an odd function. 
when you multiply an odd function and even function you actually get an odd function. So, therefore, phi 0 is an even function phi 1 is an odd function you would see that phi 2 has 4 rho square minus 2 and this 4 rho square the polynomial 4 rho square minus 2 is even. So, therefore, phi 2 is, in a, is an even function and phi 3 you can see for yourself is again an odd function. So, the Eigen functions of har, uh, harmonic oscillators have opposite parity the, the consecutive Eigen functions have opposite parity. If uh, phi 0 is even, phi 1 is odd, phi 2 is even, phi 3 is odd and so on and so forth. The other thing that you would uh, like to uh, notice here is that when I have this functional form of rho into e to the power rho square by 2, you would see that I am, I am multiplying two functions one rho another this gauss bell shaped Gaussian function. The bell shaped Gaussian function we have already uh, seen this. So, the functional form would be this would be this would be uh, this would be a Gaussian function e to the power minus rho square by 2 which is symmetric uh, around x equals 0. And when I multiply this with a rho to get this function. So, this is my 0. So, I have other function is. So, when this is this is my rho axis rho is 0 rho is plus infinite rho is minus infinite the e to the power minus rho square by 2 term is is, is the Gaussian bell shape form rho is simply the, the straight line here. So, when I multiply these two function you would see that at rho equals 0 the wave function will become 0. Why? Because this function will develop a node that means, where the wave function will vanish when rho is equal to 0 come here look at this value uh, look at this uh, phi 2 form e to the power minus rho square by 2 this is a Gaussian function. Now, I have to multiply this with a polynomial which is 4 rho square minus 2. I can see where this 4 rho square minus 2 becomes 0. So, if I make if I find out the values of rho where this function will become 0 then I would know what at what values of rho I will have the nodes in this wave functions. Similarly, in this ex expression also you can find out what are the values of node what are the values of rho where the wave this polynomial will become 0 and when this polynomial becomes 0 the entire wave function becomes 0 and the wave function uh, will develop a node at that point. So, the nodal structure of the harmonic oscillator Eigen functions are derived from this Hermite polynomials. You can see that the 0th order the 0 order Hermite polynomial has no uh, rho dependence. So, therefore, the phi 0 the lowest Eigen function of harmonic oscillator has no node. On the other hand the second Eigen function of harmonic oscillator which has a Hermite polynomial of rho and there is exi there exists only one value of rho where this form becomes 0 and that is rho equals 0. So, therefore, the second Eigen function of harmonic oscillator has one node. The third Eigen function of harmonic oscillator can have two nodes because I have got a second order uh, polynomial here. So, therefore, at two different values of rho the Fermite polynomial will become 0 and therefore, the wave function will become 0 and I will get two nodes in this third Eigen function. And similarly, and, and for phi 3 I will get 3 nodes or at 3 different values of rho the wave function will become 0. So, next what we will do is that we will discuss how these wave functions appear So, this is my this is the harmonic oscillator potential if you see the uh, if you remember the energy Eigen values that I uh, we discussed uh, when n equals 0 1 2 3 the energy uh, energy values are all equispaced. So, just to remind you the energy here is h bar o by omega this is 3 by 2 h bar omega this is 5 by 2 h bar omega and so on and so forth and this is the lowest 
lowest Eigen value or the lowest state of harmonic oscillator and the energy that it has is called the 0, zero point energy. Now, what we see here are the are the Eigen functions are the Eigen functions of the harmonic oscillator their functional form. You see the rho for n equals 0. So, this is this is for n equals 0 this is a bell shaped Gaussian function when I multiply the the for n equals 1 I have 2 rho into e to the power minus rho square by 2 that is the functional form. So, therefore, you see at rho equals 0. So, this in the x axis I am plotting rho y axis I am plotting uh, phi. So, uh, you can see at rho equals 0 I am developing a node and I have got only one node and in case of phi 2. So, this is phi 2, this is phi 3, this is phi 1 and this is phi 0. In case of phi 2 I have got two different nodes. Please remember this th these values are actually not, not nodes actually they asymptotically approach uh, 0. So, at long distance they would actually become 0, but they, they do not have a uh, nodal structures there. So, these are the two nodal points here and in this case phi 3 these are the three nodal points that I see. When I this is these are the wave functions I can I can show you now the phi n square. So, this is phi 0 square, phi 1 square, phi 2 square and, and so on so forth. One thing that you, you notice is that again the nodal structures uh, can be found. So, this is the probability, uh, probability uh, density at this point becomes 0. So, these are the points where you have node because that is where the probability density uh, vanishes and these are the probability uh, density of the corresponding to uh, corresponding to the wave functions of the harmonic oscillator. So, in today's lecture we discussed the functional form of harmonic oscillators we started by this started from the lowest Eigen function of the harmonic oscillator and then we applied the step up operator repeatedly and thereby we generated higher Eigen functions. That is why we also call this step up operator as creation operator because by acting this step up operator on the lowest Eigen functions we simply create higher and higher states. Then we also came across that there exists a general definition of this Eigen functions of harmonic oscillator which has a normalization constant, a Hermite polynomial and a Gaussian function e to the power minus rho square by 2. We also discussed that the Eigen functions of har harmonic oscillator have definite variety some of them are even some of them are odd the odd and even functions appear consecutively. And we also discussed what are their uh, what are the shapes of this uh, wave functions and what are the shapes of the probability distribution for corresponding to these wave functions. We will continue our discussion on harmonic oscillator in the next class. Thank you for your attention.